Hello everyone, my name is William and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make permanent changes to websites through something called inspect element uh, or developer options essentially. Uh, uh, you might be asking, well William, what is this inspect element developer options thing you're talking about? Well, I'm just going to show you real quick, okay? So let's go ahead and jump onto the desktop and uh, open up Google Chrome. Preferably you should use Google Chrome for this video. So, um, open up Google Chrome and let's just uh, go to some uh, website uh, like google.com. Um, now, on this uh, on Google, um, you know, obviously it's a very beautiful uh, website, of course, but uh, you might want to make some few changes to it. Maybe it's just for fun, or maybe some of the design elements of the page actually annoys you a bit. Uh, so, for example, we could go ahead and uh, right-click on this uh, Google search button. Um, you know, maybe we want to change the text inside of it. Uh, you want to right-click and press inspect right here. Now, um, what you get here is the developer options, and that is this part of the window you can see right here. And it has a lot, it's, it's going to look very, very confusing at first. But really what it's all about is you have all of the elements of the website right here and the one we right clicked on is the one marked with blue right here so it says that it's an input element and the type is submit which means you're submitting some data uh, when you press google search um, makes sense as well but you know we could go ahead and change the value of the button right here and that will essentially change it on the on the visual part of the website right so so let's uh, go ahead and um, change it to something f funny yeah couldn't come up with anything uh, but what you can see is all right it, it actually worked you know we have made some changes however they are not permanent and uh, well guys that is where my video comes in because um, I found some pretty cool tools um, that you can use to make these changes permanent as a matter of fact, I created one of them. Um, so, you know, uh, this is not supposed to be an ad adverti advertisement on anything, uh, you know, but, you know, it, it would be nice to maybe get more than two users on my Chrome extension. So, you know, um, hope you can, uh, yeah, hope it, hope that's all right, at least. Uh, so, um, yeah, so let's switch back to Chrome once again. Um, so, um, all right, what what are we gonna do? We're gonna add something called a Chrome extension. So, what is a Chrome extension? Well, it's 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 basically a, a tiny piece of software that um, is gonna live in your browser and it's gonna have access to the websites you visit and it's gonna be able to change the websites. Um, well. HTML, which is what websites are built of. Um, so once, when we search for Chrome extensions, um, this website is going to come up. It's called Chrome Web Shop, and this is an official uh, website from from Google. So you know, don't worry about visiting visiting this. At least, what you should worry about is you know just going and downloading all kinds of random uh, Chrome extensions. But uh, I've actually created one that. Um, uh, of course, I can promise you there's no kind of malicious um, elements in my extension at all. Don't worry about that. It's called Codify. And uh, when you search for it, um, this is what you will see. Oh, damn. So <laughs> I just realized I've got 23 users, uh, which I did not have yesterday. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Um, anyways, you're going to go ahead and visit this page. I'm going to leave a link in the description. And then you are going to be clicking the button over here that says Add to Chrome. Now, once it has uh, been added, you will be able to see a an icon over here in the corner, um, which you are going to be able to click on. Now, go ahead and click on it, and there is going to be an instructions page. There's going to be a page to add some code to a website, and there's going to be a page to manage all of the code you have added. So. Um, yeah, the instructions uh, you can write, you can read them if you want to. I just wrote some quick instructions. If um, you haven't tried web development or um, 
any of that before, then this might be helpful for you. But uh, I'm going to explain all of it in this video, so don't worry about that. So, um, all right. So once you've gotten it, um, once you have added it, then let's try go back to Google uh, to the Google.com website. Okay, and then we can actually go ahead and click on the pop-up icon over there. What it's going to show in the, is the instruction page, and then we want to go ahead and click on Add Code. Now, what we can do here is uh, essentially um, add the code that we want to ru run on um, Google.com, um, or at least it's going to run on all of the websites that matches this string over here. So this is just a piece of text, and all the website URLs that matches this is going to be um, that the code is going to run on essentially. So you can choose whether it should just contain the page URL, so this one, if the URL contains it, or if it should be directly equal to this string. Uh, I always choose contains because otherwise you have to write the exact URL and you have to copy paste it even with the HTTPS um, extension as well. So Anyways, so let's go ahead and try something out. Very simple. What you can do, you can go ahead and write prompt uh, just to test that things are working out for you. So you can go ahead and write prompt and then say hello there. And um, what this is going to do is uh, you call a function called prompt. This function, um, well, well, basically just prompts you to answer the question um, in the parentheses essentially. So let's go ahead and try and add, assign this code to the page. So we'll do that by pressing this button. And if you go to manage your code over here, you'll be able to see that this piece of code has been added to google.com. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's that's just about it. So, okay, so let's go ahead and reload google.com and let's see what happens. Oh, how about that? So you can see that I reload the Google. I can I can try it again if you want to. So I reload uh, Google, and you will see that it says "Hello there." That's exactly what we wrote. So let's write an answer, and absolutely nothing happens because obviously you're the one who wrote the code. There's no 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 kind of malicious behavior going on here. Um, but in instead of you know this terribly um, in useful thing, you know, it's not useful. I think that's the word in useful. Don't know. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and, and, and do something useful. Something you might want to do is, um, you know, as we did before, maybe change the text of the button right here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's depending really on how the HTML code is written. Um, so we got to figure out how to do this. Yeah, should maybe have done some more research. But essentially, what we want to do is maybe change this to some kind of random string. OK, um, so what we can identify is that there's a division containing this input element. Um, so I'm going to copy one of these classes, which means which is a way to identify this specific division. So um, what I can do is go into console and write document dot get element spy class name, paste this in the one I copied and enter. And you can see that there's going to be an HTML collection consisting of one element. And this is the exact element that we wanted. So what we can actually do is copy this again, paste it in and then say dot get um, or we want to get the the first element which is index zero and then we want to say okay get um, elements by tag name because then we can actually write input right here and then we can just choose the first input which is this one and say dot value which is the value which is what changes the text and set it equal to whatever we, we want so let's set it equal to well my youtube channel name why not uh or there's actually a lot of reasons why not to do this but you know never mind as you can see this actually worked so it it changed the text and 
you might have uh, guessed it. Well, we can just copy this piece of code right here, drop it into the extension, paste it in right here, and add it to the page. Go to manage, just make sure it's been added. It has been added indeed. And let's try and read it. It's going to prompt us. And then, boom, it's going to be IT overview once again. So let's go ahead and delete this um, prompting thing. We don't want that. So now we just have the one that changes the text of the button. There's a little glitch right there. Don't know why. So let's close down develop options, reload, boom. It will be permanently changed to IT overview. Now that's pretty cool and everything, but you know what? We're gonna do something that is even cooler. So something you might wanna do is make Google night mode, turn it into night mode. Now how, do, how, how, we, how would we do that? All right, so let's think about it. What, 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 is, um, what is Google made of? Well, essentially it is made of a bunch of divisions. So it's basically boxes containing more boxes, containing text, containing buttons. And we would like to change the background color of the largest box, because then it changes the background color of the whole page. So um, let's go ahead and back to Chrome, okay? So we can right click and press inspect once again. Then we will get a division right here and you can see that the blue area is the, the, the size of this box and a, a box is essentially what is called a division or a div. Um, but we wanna get the, the whole thing. So content is a little bit bigger but we wanna, we wanna have the whole side. Oh, so look here, so it seems that this division right here which is called viewport that's the ID of this division it seems that it actually covers the whole page so let's go ahead and try and copy this ID go into con go into the console right here and press document which means well the website dot get element by ID so we are getting an HTML element by its ID and you re as you remember we copied the ID which is viewport so let's um, let's go ahead and, and try this and see what it returns. Boom, it returns an element. And this is the element we were just talking about. So that's quite convenient, right? So let's go ahead and copy this. And, uh, oh, I accidentally copied it too much. So um, let's go ahead and press dot style, dot background color equals Let's just for fun change it to black because that is sort of um, if you want to get something into the night mode theme, then a black is a good option to go with, obviously. So let's try that. Oh, how about that? We have got google.com in um, night mode. So um, as you know, we can just copy this and go in here, add code, paste it in, assign it to the page, reload, boom permanently changed. Now we have got a black background and we have got our custom button right here. Now, essentially nothing has happened to the functionality. If you click this button, it should just do the same thing as, as, as ever. Apparently it doesn't. That was a very, that was very disappointing. <laughs> um, anyways, so, um, yeah, none of the functionality has really, you know, disappeared. You can go ahead and search and everything. One thing you might notice is, okay, you know, it's not changed when, you, when you're when you in your search results. Well, that's because the p website does not look identical. Um, so that, oh, if, you, if you're if you on the um, on, on the search page, you wanna go ahead and use this ID instead, but you can just add multiple, um, uh, scripts essentially to the same page so we could go ahead and say dot background color and set it to be black boom okay it doesn't look that great obviously but you know you can go ahead and maybe change the colors and multiple elements in the same page and you might get it to actually look good. One thing you will notice here is that the Codify extension has actually thrown an error here. here. And this is something I built in to make sure you, that you're able to debug the code. 
So it says that there's a type error incurred in your code. So it doesn't know to read something of undefined and something of null. So what does all that mean? Well, it means that the elements that we discussed before on the previous google.com page, well, they don't exist on the search page. So they are just undefined or null or something, you know, and, and, and therefore, um, you'll actually have to preferably specify the URL match right here to make sure that, that the URL over here only, um, that the code only runs when the URL matches, um, maybe slash search, then it will only run when it's slash search, right? Uh, or on the home page, you might make it to only run when it's this specific ex URL extension, you know, whatever works for you, essentially. Um, all right, guys, that's cool and everything. But I'm going to show you that's even cooler than that. So um, well, what we can do is go to youtube.com and maybe find a YouTube channel. You know, we could maybe prank our friends by changing the subscriber number. So let's go ahead and onto Chrome right here. This is my YouTube channel right here. And um, what, what do we want to do? Well, we would like to make sure that whenever we are on the page, like this it says that the subscriber number is oh yeah i already did that sorry <laughs> but essentially what i did is just go ahead right click on this element that tells you the amount of subscribers then there's this um weird html tag that we haven't really heard about really you know it's a youtube formatted string don't know about that but essentially what we can do is what i've written in the code right here just going to copy it. You know, just say document.getElementById, then the ID of the this piece of element, which is this one says ID equals subscribe account, and then say dot inner HTML, set it equal to, yeah, whatever the whatever you want, really. Um, you know, just for the sake of the video, let's change something else. And you can see that it immediately changes right there. And this is what I just added to browser so uh, just for the sake of the video once again let's delete this and add it again so I, as you can see I have uh, added this piece of code let's just make it some random number and then um, what is actually um, important um, regarding this specific change is that it should match the exact YouTube channel right so instead of it containing the URL we should set it to be equal ex exactly equal to this piece of url text and then add the code as you can see it's been added right here and let's go ahead and reload and see if the changes are permanent and as you can see it looks like they are so that's so you know guys uh it, it's obviously stupid this you know it's, uh, this specific example about YouTube, it's it's very stupid, but you can do a lot of cool things actually, you know, if there's just tiny details about some website that you don't like, you can change it for good, permanently, make it your own website, you know, customize it and everything. Um, this is a long video, I know, I should end it right here, so yeah, thanks for watching and um, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to maybe drop a like, subscribe, that's all up to you. Uh, but other than that, uh, hope you are having a um, good day and uh, everything, you know. Uh, so, see you in my next video. Peace out.